Maybe a fish or some seaweed. Whoa, what the heck? Wait, is this a fish? What's up anglers and anglets? It's your boy Sven and welcome back to my channel. So for today, we're gonna do some good old jetty fishing down here in Dana Point. It's a beautiful day for fishing. Well, it's always a beautiful day for fishing. There's no wind right now. It's nice and sunny. There's no clouds at all. The waves look like they're a little rough, but that's okay, not a big deal. Strike that, the waves are really rough. The main goal is to catch some surf perch and try to do a catch and cook. It's been a while since I did a catch and cook at all. It was really fun. I had no clue what I was doing back then, but I'm a little bit more prepared. I brought some cooking and some camping gear. Hopefully we can catch a nice surf perch and we can get this catch and cook on the way. All right, enough chit chat, let's get the fishing. For the Akuma Nomad Express, I got a high-low rig on it with two size four eagle claw hooks, two pieces of shrimp. Because I am chucking this one pretty far, I'm using a four ounce disc just to kind of keep it in place. Oh nice, there's already a little hole here. The next thing to do is to get some water. It looks really rough over here, probably not a safe idea. That's much better. Look how calm it is over here. Maybe a fish or some seaweed. Going all the way to the left. I cast it really far to the right. Whoa, what the heck? Wait, is this a fish? Whoa, wait, it's a huge bat ray. Oh man, how the heck do I land this? Man, it broke off. There was no way I was able to lift that out. Bent the crap out of my hook. I guess that's for the best. I didn't really want to lift them out of the water anyways. There would have been no easy way to put them back after. I wonder why the bell didn't go off. That was a massive bat ray. It should have definitely ding ding the cowbell. That was a pretty fun fight though. Let's see what else is out there. Now for the Ugly Stick GX2. High low rig, size six hooks, three ounce torpedo. Fish on? Yeah, fish on. That was quick. Nice. It's a little black surf perch, or what I like to call butter perch. Exactly what we're looking for. But well, this guy's pretty small. Let's let him on back. Oh, a cool looking fish though. All right, thanks for playing Mr. Surf Perch. Boop. Two fish within 10 minutes. Pretty good. Surf perch like to school together. So you find one, there's probably a couple more around. Nibble, nibble. All right, it's on. Three fish in 15 minutes. Thanks for playing, dinky boy. Cool. This is going pretty well. I already caught three fish and I kind of just got here. Here's another quick tip. If you're fishing at the rocks or jetty, make sure you tighten your drag all the way. Ah, what the heck? How did they even splash over here? This is why you gotta be careful. You never know. These rocks were pretty dry up until about right now. Anyways, tighten your drag all the way because if a fish bites and takes you into a hole, you're gonna be in trouble. Casting back out to the same spot. Oh. Nibble, nibble, already. It's only been about 20 seconds in the water. 
Probably gonna put this rod away and man the other one. This rod's a little beefier anyways. Still using a high-low rig, but using size six hooks and a torpedo sinker just like the ugly stick. This rod's a little bit better for this setting because these waves are gonna push me into the kelp. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Lots of nibbles. Now I just took my bait. So I'm gonna swap back to the four ounce disc and chuck it out. This kelp and rocks is just ripping my rigs apart. I just need to get a little distance away from all these waves. Don't forget to bring extra water when you're fishing, especially on a nice hot day like this. Just rebaited and I remembered I have this. This little thing is called a bait button. If you already feel like you're losing your bait too much, all you gotta do is put your bait on and then run the hook just like that and it'll help hold your bait. Not really necessary for shrimp, but if you're using a soft bait like mussels or worms or something like that, this would be very helpful. It just keeps the bait from slipping off your hook. Took a bit, finally caught another fish. Ah, that explains a lot. It's a wrasse. It's a neat looking fish. Rock wrasses are notorious bait nibblers. Look at how small their mouth is. I'm gonna hold on to this one, mainly because the bite's really slowed down. I haven't caught another nice surf perch yet, and I've heard good and bad things about this fish. Some people say they're good to eat, some people say they're not that good. I think I'm gonna give it a shot if I can't catch a surf perch. I also picked this thing up, keep them alive a little bit longer. Of course it was Rassy boys. I've been losing my bait for about an hour now. It makes a lot of sense. Rock wrasses always nibble right away. They're just so hard to, okay, maybe I got one. Whoa, this is a chunky one, what the heck? Can't be a wrasse, is it? Yep, it's another wrasse. <laughs> you know what, let's just do the catch and cook. I got two wrasses, two wrasse? What's the plural form? Well, I got two of these. And I've never cooked them before, so I'm very curious how they would taste. So let's just cook these up and see how it goes. First thing you gotta do is knock them out. And to do that, you just need to bonk them. I got a little bonking stick right here. It's a very simple process. If you don't have a bonking stick, you can use anything heavy or solid, like a rock. You want one good smack on the head just to knock them out. Make it a good one, you don't want them to suffer. Here we go. And they're out. When you bonk them, their heart's still beating. So the next thing you can do is to cut their gills. Bleeding a fish out helps get rid of the fishy taste. So bonk them, cut their gills, and just throw them back in the water to let them bleed out. Let's get the next one. While the fish bleed out, let me show you what I'm working with today. I got this nice little compact propane butane stove attachment. It's for backpacking. Open it up to get better surface area. Comes with these two little things. One of them is an adapter for this little protein tank right here. And this is what we're gonna be using to cook. Now this is what it looks like fully assembled. Very simple, very easy, very compact. I like this a lot because of the adapter to attach to the propane tank. This is a very common propane tank you can find almost anywhere. So this is very convenient to have because you can always get these little fuel tanks all over the place. One thing I did forget though is a cutting board, but that's all right, not a big deal. First thing you're gonna wanna do, scale the fish. I'm gonna cook it with the skin on. So all you gotta do is take your knife and just run backward on the fish like this. And then all the scales should pop off. So when I was scaling, I got rid of all its coloration, but if I brush it the other way, it just comes right back. That's the pattern of the fish. Next step is to cut the fish. Take your knife, go through the bug hole, and make your way up and remove all its guts. Since I'm gonna cook it whole, the next step I'm gonna do is remove all the fins, and that's super easy. You just need a pair of scissors and you can just kind of snip them off. Save the fins up here. Snip all the fins off. Last step, cut off the head, and you're done. And here's both fish, all prepped up and ready to go. Actually fits perfectly in the pan. So let's start the cooking. You gotta turn this on, you're gonna need a lighter. To turn it off, it's all the way to the right. To open it up, is a little bit to the left. So slowly until you hear some gas hiss. And there we go. So for this recipe, I'm gonna keep it as simple as simple gets. I got a mason jar over here filled with some corn oil 
and I'm literally just gonna fry up the rock grass. No fancy prep, no fancy marinade or anything. It's just gonna be super simple frying them straight up. Just gonna pour in a good amount, nothing too crazy. I recommend always drying your fish before adding it into hot oil because it's gonna splatter if you don't. Here's the first one. Ow. And here's the second one. Then I cook on each side for a few minutes before flipping. Time to flip them. The cool thing about fish is they don't take very long to cook at all. So this is probably gonna be done like really soon. Maybe like in a few minutes. All right, that should be good. Turn off the flame. And there you go. Super simple, easy catch and cook because there's literally nothing going on here besides fried fish. But one thing you can do to spice things up is to add a little soy sauce. So this is the only seasoning that I'm gonna be using for this fried fish. Dribble a little bit on. And that's all you need. Let's see what this tastes like. Nice and crunchy. There's probably gonna be so many bones, isn't there? I can already see them just sticking out. Look at that nice flaky meat though. Let's see how it tastes. Not that bad. It's mild, flaky, a little mushy, but that might be my fault because I did fry it in a very weird way. Get rid of that little piece of bone. I like it though. Nothing spectacular, but it is good enough for one spend. Oh, that was a nice crunchy piece. Super simple, easy catch and cook. If I was to rate it, I'd probably only give this a six out of 10. For rock rass itself, it's not bad, honestly, but kind of mushy. I'd say this was a success. It's simple, it's palatable, and I kind of like it. If anything else, it was definitely a good learning experience. I'm gonna need to get something better to cook with and probably something more stable because this was rickety the entire time. Just a little troubleshooting to do for the next catch and cook. All right, I'm just gonna finish this up and then clean up and pack up. Thanks for watching. I hope this was at least a little fun to watch. Don't forget to pick up your trash. I brought a little trash bag. If you're gonna cook with oil, make sure you don't just randomly dump it. Once the oil cools off, I'm gonna pour it back into the little jar that I brought it with and then take it out. Remember to always pick up your trash. Don't leave anything that you came here with. Later.